and welcome to Loopy Mabel's Closet. My name's Jane and today's video is all about this little number I'm wearing today. It's the Sorrel Dress by Jennifer Lauren Handmade in conjunction with the beautiful ladies at Felicity Fabrics who I also blog for and I thought I'd show you exactly what it looks like on me and what I think of the pattern. So please stay tuned. Welcome back. So yeah, it's all about this little number that I'm wearing. It's the Sorrel Dress by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. I'll just show you the pattern. Now it's not um, a pattern that, in fact, I've never made any of Jennifer Lauren Handmade patterns before. I do have the Juniper Cardigan pattern and the fabric to make it, but I haven't actually done it yet. And when I saw this dress, I just thought, I'm going to try it. It's something a little bit out of my comfort zone. It's not a, like it's a proper, I would say it's a proper dress for me, that is. And it's not something I would normally choose. And I just thought, oh, it's a bit fitted and it's got more of a dress style. And I thought, try it. And I really like it. I'm really pleased with it. I'll stand up and show you in a second, but that's the actual pattern. And I'll show you the back and you've got the obviously the line drawings on the back. So you've got two views, you've got view one and view two. I did view one. The only difference is with the, the two views really is there's a different um, in the button band. One doesn't have any button band and obviously mine that I've chose has the button band. I think that's the only difference. And the fabric, as you can see, is this gorgeous gingham fabric, 100% cotton gingham fabric. There's a the little swatch that you always get when you get your fabrics from Felicity Fabrics. They come with beautifully gift wrapped. I've said this a few times. I'm sure I've, I've shown pictures on Instagram of how they come and beautifully wrapped in tissue paper and everything, the beautiful box. And you always get a lovely little swatch card. So it's good for reference for later down the line if you ever wanted to wonder what it is that you made and you can't remember you can use it as your reference because all the details are on the back as well so i'll just show you the swatch so you get the, obviously a little bit of the fabric that you've chosen and the ladies always write on the back what it is so you've got the fabric name you've got the composition the width and any care guides that needed so this is obviously gingham and this is Bordeaux. Now I chose this colour because it's not red red, which is not a colour that I'm keen on, the red red. And it's also not on my colour wheel, but I do have like the blood red, darker red. And I chose this because I thought this would be a perfect alternative to the red. And I love a gingham. I think everybody loves a gingham, but this is beautiful quality gingham. This is not poly cotton or anything like that. This is 100% cotton and it's just a dream to work with. It irons beautifully, it cuts beautifully, and obviously it sews gorgeous too. 145 centimeters wide, this one, and Care Guy wash on 30 degree wash, medium iron. So you've got all those little details on the back if ever you need to refer to it. Or if you ever wanted to order it again, then you've got the details of what it was that you ordered. So that always comes with it. I really like the gingham. And as I say, this is just a beautiful colour red for me. So I'll stand up and show you. And obviously I'll pop some pictures up of me in the garden as I talk as well. So yeah, it's gorgeous really. I'm really pleased with it. It's not, like I say, it's not my type of thing because I tend to go for like a bodice with like maybe the gathered skirt look. I'm not a great one for dresses if you follow me. I don't have any skirts but I'm trying to like try things that I'm out my comfort zone or maybe not my style to see if I'd really do like them and they may be my style. So I chose this one and it's a proper dress for me. It's got the pockets and it's got these gorgeous um open darts I think they're called so they just straight line dart you don't they don't go into a point so like open dart and I think I've managed to line them up pretty well obviously you've got the top you've got the bodice part and then you've got the skirt part and obviously you saw them obviously at the waist and you need to line up those open darts and again you've got them on the back and I think it's quite quite a flattering shape actually because it comes in and shows off your waistline and it's really flattering. I think it's really nice. And obviously you've got the pockets. 
And the only thing different I did with the pockets, I understitched the the pocket bags. It didn't say to do that in the pattern, but I did that. I just like that little bit of extra detailing, and I just think the makes the pocket a little bit more crisper. That's the only thing I did differently there. I didn't do anything different on the length. Cut it out as was. I didn't take the length up. And I'll pop some pictures of me wearing it in the garden so you can see the length. It just comes to my knee. Uh, what else did I do that was different? I top stitched it all because the pattern didn't say to top stitch it. But I just felt with it having the facing. Um, the facing's all um, overlocked and, you know, neating the edges and what have you, but I wasn't quite keen on just leaving it to be pressed and then let the facing do what it wants inside. I just didn't think it made it crisp enough. So on my version, I top stitched as much as I could. I also understitched the facing as much as I could. I, I understitched as far as I could get um, on here before it obviously hit the point and you couldn't get no further with your machine but I just thought the understitch and helped the facing fold over much neater so I did understitching and then obviously I top stitched all the way around the neck and around this band and I think that's the only thing that I did that wasn't it the instructions didn't say and I yeah really do like it obviously I've got it got no I've got obviously I've got nothing on underneath it and obviously we're in October now and I'll probably, well I will, add a long sleeve skinny tee underneath, white one or whatever, whatever colour really I think will go quite nice with this. But obviously I'm just wearing it without anything underneath just so you can see the dress. I didn't want to take anything away from the dress. And it's like a kimono type sleeve so it's built in sleeve so you don't have any sleeves to worry about and it's just literally a turnover and I just used I just overlocked the edge to use that as my quarter inch turnover turned over the overlocked edge and then turned it over again so like a double turn hem and I really like that finish I think it's really neat and I love the fact that when you overlock the edge you've got something solid on the edge to fold over and everything seems to fold over really neatly that way and then obviously you can fold it over again and finish with your top stitching. So I quite like that way of doing it. And that's just my cat rustling in, in my bin, if you can hear him. And 11 buttons. So I had to root through my tin. As, I mean, I've got a button tin with all the toffee. Top it. So I've got lots of buttons in my button tin, but I'm struggling to find like quite a few of one style. So I, I really had to root through it to come with my 11. And I chose these show you again mother of pearl four hole buttons i think they're old shirt buttons i think and they've got like a, a gorgeous like little tortoiseshell look on the back you can't really see but yeah and lined them up and yet yeah, a dream all went in a dream absolute dream so really pleased how they went and i just put a little bit of fray check on each buttonhole just to stop any fraying down the line and I've even managed to line up the waist there too. And I'm quite pleased with how it's turned out. I had no problems at all. I didn't have to use, no, tell a lie, I did have to use my own picker. I had to get my own picker out once because, what did I do? Something to do with the pockets. I, don't, I can't remember now, I had to unpick. Oh, I forgot to. I stitched my pocket bags on and I forgot to overlock first. I like to overlock all the way around the pockets. So I had to unpick them, overlock them, then put them on. It's much easier doing that way. Then you don't have to worry about trying to get your overlock because I can't do that. I don't know if anybody else has tried that, trying to get your overlock around a curve. No, so that's what I did. So yeah, I had to get my unpicker out for that. But that was all that was for. A really nice sewing afternoon. I cut it out yesterday morning, Saturday, and just took my time sewing it, it over the course of the day it cooked dinner and you watched a little bit of tv and come back in and did a bit more but completely finished it all yesterday and if i added up all the time that it took me to make it all together probably about four hours in total with all the buttons and hand sewing the buttons on so it was a really pleasant sewing afternoon and I think it's just going to make an absolute great layering piece. As I say, I'll be able to wear some skinny long sleeve tees underneath this. And then obviously a nice maybe cosy cardigan or a nice jumper over the top. Maybe a v-neck jumper so you can see the lovely 
detail of the collar. It's not so much a collar as such. It just, you know, like flaps, flaps flat naturally. I haven't pressed it like this. It just goes flat naturally. And I quite like that detail. Just showing a little bit of the neckline. I think that's quite pretty. And what more can I say? I'm really pleased, really like it. Obviously, some, you can see me wearing it in the garden. Obviously, I'll pop a little bit of me moving around, a little video of me moving in the garden, just so you can see what it's like. Obviously, if you're a dress kind of girl and you like to wear dresses, it's a, just a beautiful dress. Obviously, you know, if you want to wear it like with tights or bare legs and what have you. I quite like this dress, but I wouldn't probably wear it over tights or bare legs. Definitely over jeans because that's that's the way I like to dress. And I really do like it. Yeah, I am really, really impressed. And oh, I've also got my seamstress little um, badge on there from Pink Court Club. I'll pop the link for that where you can get these from in the box below and I just added it comes like on its own and I just added like a little brooch finding so it's more like a little hangy down type of thing it reminds me of my prefect badge when I was at school so when I put this on I always feel like I'm the you know prefect for the day so I'm really overall impressed with the pattern I'm totally impressed with the instructions. Obviously, I've used the proper pattern rather than the PDF, but I shall show you the little booklet that you get. And obviously, there's my traced pattern pieces for future, because I think I'd like to make it again. I think I'd keep making option one with the button band. I like the the structure of the button band down the front as I say option two it's you obviously when you cut your front your front pieces out or when you cut your pieces out you if you're going to go for option two your piece is a little bit wider because obviously for option one you cut your piece shorter then you add the button band on so it takes to the same obviously the same width and that's the only difference then obviously you add the facing on both of them so with, with option two you just have the facing so that's the only difference but I quite like the detailing of that button band instructions I had no problem with any of the instructions really clear concise instructions and no head scratching at all and everything came together lovely all the notches lined up beautifully and I'll show you one more just really clear, really simple instructions. And I would say if you're fairly new to dressmaking and you've got a machine that's quite good on the buttonhole making, I would say give it a go because there's no sleeves to worry about inserting. There's no zips. Obviously you've got your buttonholes, there's 11 buttonholes, but if you can do one buttonhole, you can do 11 buttonholes. And I just measured one and then I, I, I measured one from the top and then I measured six centimeters down for the next one. I didn't use the guide, I just worked start from the first one on the guide of the on the pattern and then I just measured I knew there was 11 buttons so I just added my 11 buttons and I just started where the first one started on the guide and then I just used six centimeter in between each button and I lined up slap bang in the middle of the button band which was four centimeters so I popped my little fabric marker pen two centimeters and then again measured six centimeters down and that's how I got them all lined up and straight you could probably get away with less buttons but I just went for the 11 and I would say if you like as I say if you're fairly new to dressmaking I would definitely give this a go because I say there's nothing technical at all to insert or add or anything like that and if you just take your time yeah it's a really pleasant make and I can't say anything more about it really really lovely I really do like it and I definitely think I will make it again I think it would be quite nice in maybe a nice light chambray denim or maybe a nice floral a floral baby cord might be nice fine needle cord 
So yeah, it's a thumbs up, 100% for me. And the fabric, as always, because it's from Felicity Fabrics, is just beautiful fabrics. And obviously I'll put pop the link for everything I've chatted about in this vlog in the box below like I usually do and obviously there will be a full blog post which you will find over on Felicity Fabrics as soon as I get it uploaded to them but they have an amazing blog um, section as well because there's a few of us on the blog a team blogging team and there's some lovely dressmaking projects that my fellow team members make and I highly recommend you go over and have a have a browse through all those makes some really talented ladies in the team that I've, I'm working with so that's today's vlog I hope you enjoyed it thumbs up if you did and if you've just found me please don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to follow along with all my dressmaking shenanigans if you can just see over my shoulder there there's another lovely pile of floral fabrics if you can just see and I'll do a little vlog on all them coming soon. And before I go, my dressmaking, my pattern dressmaking is coming along tickety boo. Shall I show you what I've got so far? I wasn't going to, but I'll show you what I've done so far. So I'll show you what I've done so far, just briefly, because I'll do a proper vlog on this. I'm making a blouse. I'm drafting, self-drafting a blouse. I was so thrilled with my self-drafted pinafore that I made I'll pop the card for that up there that it's just like got me hooked I'm totally hooked I really really want to start creating my own patterns so I'm doing a blouse and I've done a little bit of twirl so from my bodice blocks I've created a blouse pattern with some sleeves and a Peter Pan collar so I've done a twirl because I want to make sure it fits me well I know now I know this fits me I know my blocks are absolutely spot on and I don't need to make any more twirls now because I know it, the measurements are absolutely spot on and that's it. They're going to fit me because the block is my block, which isn't going to change unless I lose a lot of weight or I put on a bit of weight. These blocks will be me. So do my twirl. You'll be, you'll be going, wow, Jane, she's done a twirl. And I've already done half of the collar because I just didn't need to do two if you know what I mean I just wanted to make sure that the collar sat right and it does this is my Peter Pan collar I've got opening at the back and I've got my sleeve in but that's not what the sleeve's going to look like the sleeve is going to be slightly different to that but I wanted to make sure the sleeve fitted I had a little bit of an issue I had a little bit too much ease going on in my sleeve which I've addressed so I think that should be fine and I've got a couple of darts just two bus darts that I've put in just for a little bit of shaping so that's what I'm doing so my twirl's done I'm going to move on to the fabric and obviously I'll do a proper vlog to show you I'll quickly show you my pattern pieces that I've just that I've drafted obviously lots of scribbling and drawing and amendments and adjustments there's the collar there's my one of my bodice pieces and there's my drafted sleeve, which I'll show you in lots more detail in the vlog of this, the finished blouse. But that's my pattern drafting update. So excited. I've been absolutely soaking all the information in. I've been reading all my dressmaking books, literally from front to back, over and over, and I've learned so much. But I'll share all that in that vlog. Uh, but that's it for today. Just tempting you there. Uh, but that's it for today and don't forget to follow me over on instagram and don't forget if you want to join in on the challenge that myself and rosie are still it's still running the closing date you've got a few more days yet can't remember the closing date but it's a few more days yet and uh, please pop your name down if you'd like to make some sewing friends it's a swap share sew challenge all it is is you get linked up paired up with another like-minded dressmaker you send each other a little sewing parcel to each other and then you try to incorporate part of that sewing parcel into your sewing project and then you post your pictures over on instagram by the end of november and it's a lovely way of making new friends so please pop on over to instagram and dm me and let me know if you'd like to join in the challenge uh, but that's it for today thanks so much for joining me hope you like my sorrel dress and i shall see you on my next sewing vlog take care for now and as always happy sewing